What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you happen to be new here, my name is Jeremy Googe, and I am glad to have you. If you are not new here, welcome back. So today is a video about my camera system for 2024. I had made a video in the past. Uh, I will try to link that here. Um, I'm wondering if I should keep the X-Pro3 in 2024. Ultimately decided that it was time for that camera to go not because of any reason or any fault of the camera. It was wonderful. I loved using it. No complaints, really. I like the fact that, that it doesn't have a rear LCD, though that's a trip up for some people. My copy was pristine, so honestly, I sold it while it was in such good condition before there were any LCD ribbon problems and just moved on into something else. That's what this video is about. That something else is the Fuji X-T5. And this was a problem or a decision I had to make and a debate that I made for a while, honestly, for weeks. I am happy to say that I'm pretty content in my system. So like I wasn't rushed to go out and do anything, but wedding season has started for me here in East Tennessee. So I definitely wanted two of the same bodies, the same lens mount for redundancy. And I like to run two cameras, two different focal lengths. This is not new. So why? the X-T5 over, say, the X-H2. And honestly, that was the biggest decision I had to make. It wasn't, you know, any of the other line of Fuji cameras, uh, the S, was it the S, X-S10, none of those really appeased me. I didn't want a camera that was just cheaper to be cheaper. I wanted a camera that gave me all of the capacity and all of the bells and whistles that I get from X-H2S, but with more megapixels. I have learned things about myself that I like to crop images, not drastically, but if I see a shot in an image that I didn't see maybe when I took it and I want to crop it drastically, I want that option. And by drastically, I don't mean, you know, drastically. But so, but on paper, obviously the 40 megapixels for the X-H2S and X-V5 are the same. It really comes down to the buttons, the ergonomics, and that's it. Uh, I think the autofocus might actually be better in the X-H2, but I haven't used it, so I can't confirm nor deny that fact. Please let me know if that's the case. I've had no issues with my X-T5 and autofocus. It's been wonderful. I'm using it as we speak. This is my second camera. I won't use a lot of this footage. This is more of a test. I have a shot video with this camera due to issues I've had with it in the past and forgetting to turn it on autofocus. That's on me. But today I'm running it with the Ninja, so I can see myself, I know I'm in focus, and I know that it's working today. But, X-T5 2024. It's a 40 megapixel camera. It is tiny. It's so small, it's so thin, so much so that I opted for the Arca Swiss uh, plate with the additional front grip, which I love. I hate, I hate, loathe tripod plates. And I just want my cage or my grip to have the Arca Swiss plate so it goes onto all of my tripods, all of my monopods, all of my, you know, vlogging, what are those things called? They're not a monopod, that mini pod, shift pod, whatever it is. I want to know that I can just go from one to the next without having to worry about, do I have that stupid foot with me, right? I don't run gimbals, don't have to worry about those additional feet. It just works. It just works. And with that grip on the X-T5, it feels fantastic in the hand, but it's still so small that I could put it in any bag that I have alongside my Leica M10 monochrome bay, and not feel like I have drugged the entire kitchen, you know, out on for a day of shooting. Typically, my go-to camera of late has been my son's Ricoh GR2 that I passed down. We've owned it twice, um, and I love that camera. Absolutely love it. But I shoot primarily the 50 mil on my Leica, and my, that's my, my rangefinder camera, that's my black and white camera. So I like to either go wider, so 16 mil, well, 24 mil equivalent on the X-T5, or I'll go with 5612 version two, which is closer to 85 mil, which I really, really love that compression, and it's one two, so it's just fun to use and get out and like let it stretch its legs. And honestly, the 56 Mark II 1.2 on the X-T5 sensor with all that resolution is gorgeous. Absolutely love that combination. So, 
for me, it made sense. I wanted a kit that I could pack up in a backpack, have all of my cameras for photo and video in one bag. I like to run a Pelican case, the 1510 I do believe is the model number. Please don't hold me to that. Um, and I can fit both of these cameras in there, no problem. With my lenses, with my adapters, the cords, batteries, everything I need, and just have it all in one place. And I could not do that with any other system comfortably. I had the R5, and I love that camera. I bought it twice. It's the only Canon camera I've actually ever really loved. But the glass is so massive, and I had the 51.2 on that camera twice. It's just too big. And I know I'm not a small person. It's not like that I can't handle the glass. It's like, at the end of the day, I don't want glass taking up an entire bag to have two or three lenses. Like, it just is not fun for me. I like to shoot film. I say that all the time. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I say it all the time. So I, it's very common for me to throw an additional camera in my bag that's shooting film. Whether that's the Mamiya 7 or the Nikon F3 or F4 or a point shoot, the XA. I don't throw the Rolly Flex in there. We ain't throwing that thing anywhere. But so partly for me is I love the XH line so much that I didn't want to have an XH line that's prim primarily my photo camera too. I wanted to have some separation in those bodies and like knowing when I pick one up, like it's for a purpose, it's it's intentional. I really wanted to be intentional with this setup for the first time in a long time. And it's working out really, really well in that regard. And then, not that this matters a whole lot, a lot of people that I've met and made friends with on threads, which I am really, really loving by the way. So if you don't follow me, please come over and hang out. It is such a better experience for photographers and creatives than Instagram. And I love Instagram, but it is by far falling away compared to threads, in my opinion. Um, but come hang out there. But a lot of my friends there shoot the X-T5 and just really, really enjoy it. So I took some advice that wasn't given. <laughs> uh, I interpreted some advice from the photos that they took and decided that for this year, my weddings, my personal work, my professional work, I've got a session this afternoon at, right after making this, will be on the X-T5. And then in worst case scenario, the X-H2, if I got in a pinch or if I wanted to run two bodies. But I really like the X-H2S just to be my photo camera. I just want it to be rigged out a little bit, cage, and just, just know that I'm ready to make video anytime. I got a new ND on here from Polar Pro with the variable in, uh, polarizer built in with the variable ND. It's the new Peter McKinnon model, which I'm really, really liking. I typically run a mic on that camera. So, it, you know what I'm saying, it's bigger, it's, it's not as travel friendly. The X-T5 can easily go in the back, it can easily go around my neck. And I, I'm not a big strap guy, but I can swap the Camaro gear strap off of my Leica onto it, no problem, like 60 seconds. Strap's ready to go and I'm moving. Uh, one or two lenses in the bag and I am moving along, doing the things I wanna do. So, size, the color is, it, it, it's, it's, you can't ignore the Fuji color. You just can't. It's great. But that's not why I switched. I think that's achievable in other ways. But the size, the lenses, the overall portability of the Fuji system, it just works for me. And honestly, the community. I love the Fuji film community. I forgot how much that I enjoyed them. I forget how much they pour into each other on socials and in real life. And like, it, it just makes a difference. I know that's silly. Like, I... I uh, shoot Leica as well, as I've said. I don't feel like I get that same level of feedback or response. Even if I get more likes on a Leica image from the monochrome camera, that doesn't mean that the people are genuine. It's just maybe people that I've never met or people that are just seeing it. Man, but the Fujifilm community, they stick together. They come in groups, <laughs> but they got your back. Uh, we have each other's back. And I know that sounds silly, but it's refreshing i think in a world that's so competitive to have people that are rooting for you even if you've never met them and i feel like i get that with the fujifilm community and that's fun and that's that's worth it that is a an added value that you will not see on a spec sheet and that's my opinion so i'm gonna hop off here i'm going to edit this video while jpeg mini runs in the background uh emptying some space on one of my external hard drives because i am running out of space apparently so it's time to do a little of that non-fun stuff and work on my computer and my hard drives. I'll go do that by myself. Hope you'll have a better day. If you shoot Fuji, let me know. Which one's your favorite? Why? Do you have a preference? If you had to do it all over again, would you buy the same system? 
What do you think? Did I make a mistake buying the X-T5 in 2024? And by say buying it new, I bought it with one actuation. One. It's new. I mean, it's not now because I own it and I shoot it. I love to shoot. Shoot every day. What do you use? X-T5? Tell me how to set it up. Tell me what you like better about it. What about it wrong? All right. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.